Welcome everyone back to the hobby desk. Today I'm going to make some more sci-fi industrial terrain and from my old favourite household materials. But with a slight twist, I've also picked up two packets of plastic straws. So what do I mean by that? I mean fun drinking straws. This is a pound from a pound shop. So I thought spraying these guys up would make me look like an Italian plumber. And these lovely things as well. So this was a fiver, and there was 72 pieces, I think, in the pack. As you can tell, I've used a few already. But these are brilliant. So you get these on eBay or Amazon, anywhere like that. Or if you're lucky, get them in your local pound store, and they just slot together as easy as that. With a bit of glue, and whatever angle you want to put them at. They are fantastic for sci-fi industrial terrain, so you know you can easily stand it up on its own, or you can put it on a base. But with this, the only limitation is your imagination. So you can go as big as you want, and you will find there is a mold line, a hefty mold line on each piece. That's the only drawback. Other than that, these are fantastic. And the same with these, these drinking straws. There's a bit of a mold line, but they're easily slottable different combinations. So with that, have fun and making your own shape. So you can make some cool piping. You can start really messing around a straight piece. Start making some weird and wonderful patterns. But in a blue Peter fashion, let's chuck that away. And here's one I made earlier. So I've made a fairly large piece of terrain. I don't want to go too, too mad with it. Next, what I would like to do is my walkways. So before adding the small pipes that run alongside or underneath, I'm going to start adding my walkways. So what I like to do get some sprue and start imagining where this will go. So I want my walkway to be that wide. So I could put it there, there. And what direction do I want them to go in? It wouldn't make any sense if I just went around in a circle, unless it was maybe going around a silo or something. But for me, I am imagining steps there, little platform, little platform, platform around there. So I've already previously gauged up this Lovely piece of sprue and chopped it out. Hey, look how prepared I am. Because there's a nice little cut out here, which I was thinking would look fantastic like so. But I need to get rid of all the little knobbly pieces and any of the numbers and things like that on show. Cut it up, file it back so it fits a little bit nicer. Okay, I will do that now. Okay, so once you've cut out your sprue, and I think that fits fairly well, so I want to glue that straight piece onto there, that straight piece onto there, just like so. I now want to cover this walkway. So you can make your own walkway, you don't have to use sprue, so you can use Costa stair sticks, things like that. But to cover the walkway, Depending on the scale of terrain, you can use what they call this cross stitch mesh, uh, granny grading in America they call it. Uh, you can use that, but that's quite big for 28mm models. I would imagine, you know, that hole might be half the size of someone's foot. And of course, you know, there's mesh like this, so I have little off cuts everywhere, so you should be able to see the mesh there. But I like finer mesh like this. So a lot of mesh like this um, it comes in bodywork kits. You can tell I've used this in the past. It's a bit messy so I'll clean up with a bit of white spirit and I will stick it on to the sprue then cut it because it just makes life easier. And I rather use a pair of scissors uh, because then it's less likely to snag. If you use a knife and it's not sharp enough and you try cutting it, it will tear and it will change the little diamonds and elongate them so it won't look so so neat but 
that's part of the charm sometimes. After you stick it on, you might want to put a couple of little tear holes, some bullet holes, you know. You don't want to make it too, too neat. This is post-apocalyptic terrain after all. So I'll stick this on, trim it up, and then I'll start priming what we've got so far. Okay, so once dry, you can easily cut out some of the pair of scissors. So just cut out the rough shape first, and you can always tidy it up when it's done. But if you put too much glue on it, it will take the definition away from the, the holes of the mesh. This stuff does cut really easy. But if you don't put enough glue on it, chances are it probably wouldn't have stuck by now. And you start pulling off the frame. So happy medium people. <laughs> so I'll just cut like so. So this stuff is very malleable, easy to cut. With a pair of scissors. So that's the rough shape. Obviously, I'm gonna tidy it up now. Cuts so so easy. Okay. Okay, so before I actually paint it, I have made up a, another piece here. So as you can see, another platform there. The same manner as I, I've made the gantry here. So just a piece of uh, sprue and the mesh over the top, a bit of super glue. And generally what I do is put something that's not likely to get stuck to this on top that's fairly weighty because the glue will squidge a little bit out of the mesh. Right, so that's my basic shape. That's what I want initially before I start adding other pipes to it. And like I said, they are fairly cheaply made, these pipes. So as you can see, grrr, make mold lines all the way down. So I don't like mold lines, so I'm just gonna use my knife, gently scrape them off. You can use a small file, a very fine file. Don't wanna put scratch marks into these pipes probably or you can use fine sandpaper to get rid of it, but basically just drag your nice, uh, knife gently over this, just to remove the worst of it. I mean, it will be painted up and it will be probably sponged as well to make it look like it's rusty and beaten up. So it doesn't matter too much, but it's just nice to get rid of it so it doesn't look like a kid's plastic toy, which we all know it is, but we want a piece of terrain, don't we? All right. So I'll get rid of all those nasty mold lines. Okay, so it's always nice to have stuff in your bit box. So I've got some ladders from Mantic and some nice support struts. Um, and these handrails, which I thought were pretty cool. So I've just cut the two little nobbles off and I think I'm gonna stick them. I mean, you want a bit of health and safety in the apocalypse world, you know. <laughs> you can't just have all death, you know, you could have a hard hat area and things like that. So I'm thinking sticking the handrail was like one there, and maybe like another one there. Um, and I'm making these pipes up, these small drinking pipes. Um, these are wonderful because they're quite substantial, you know, I can't really crush them easily by hand. And they just slide in like so. You probably don't need any glue that is pretty much in there. Um, and they're a bit too small really to drill holes and put rivets in and things like that. Uh, but they are lovely pipes. So I was messing around with a few shapes. So I'm thinking maybe stick one there, which looks quite nice. And maybe another one that loops underneath it all. Possibly there might be too many straws. I'm probably gone straw mad, um, but yeah, just mess around with a few f uh, configurations, and it's nice to keep a little bit or two from occasional kits like I had that from a conquest magazine. So it's nice to have a little toolbox, maybe just left there or something painted up. And I quite like these little lights, a bit grim, darky looking lights. So I might stick them underneath there. Uh, so when it's all painted, have a nice light source shining. 
or the occasional sci-fi box. Uh, once again, this one's from Mantic. Um, so it's nice to have a few little pieces to add some detail to your uh, terrain. Um, but for me, I like it so a model can easily stand in a place, so I don't want it too, too cluttered. But it's up to you, it's totally your choice. So I'm going to work out where I can put a few ladders and whatnot. And we'll carry on messing around with some pipes. Yeah, even though I've gone slightly pipe mad, um, that's not an actual medical condition. Um, I've combined the two pipes, instead of having pipes weaving in and out, to make a stronger structure. So I'm going to stick it like this. So rather than having a pipe that might be wibbly wobbly, that's a very scientific term. I'm great here, I might as well be a doctor or something. Um, so I've made up this frame and I will stick it to this piece. Uh, as you can see, I have stuck the two handrails on the top corner. Remember, health and safety at all times, even the apocalypse people. And it's a shame to waste this ladder from Mantic because it is the exact same height as this gantry. So I am going to attach it just there. So for that, because I can see the plastic sprue there, um, I would like to use some plastic glue. Um, so that will melt the two plastic halves together because it is only attached only in one section and I am very wary that in transport it might get broken off. So I'll use some plastic glue there to melt that on and I'll attach that on and I think I'll attach that and then it's time for spraying possibly. So I could always replace these lights, these little lights I want to put underneath like little flashing beacons, beacons even, to strip lighting. Um, that's also from Games Workshop, so it's nice to keep um, a bits box of all pieces of terrain. Uh, now I know this is Tau Weaponry from Warhammer, um, but I've cut the barrel off and I thought that looked quite sci-fi, so I might stick that somewhere on top of the pipes, looking a bit like pistons or pumps or something. So it's always nice to have a bits box, uh, it takes years to get a decent collection. But never chuck anything away. Um, so this is your permission right now. There should be a warning come up on the screen saying to your your better half or your parents that it's okay to be a hoarder. It's okay. Ross said it's fine. So you can hoard whatever you want for terrain making purposes. So if your house is cluttered and you're getting yelled at, it's okay. You've got permission from me. Right, okay, so I will stick this ladder on with a bit of plastic glue. I'll stick those pipes down as well. Okay, so once you stuck all your little sci-fi bits on, um, you know, the, the framework's fine when it's basic, totally acceptable. If you haven't got any little bits to stick on, not a problem. But um, I was half tempted to have a platform up here. Uh, but what I've done is just obviously technically a three tier. So floor, there, there. I didn't want it to be overly complicated, so I wasn't going to put another platform there. Because um, it's not that high, you know, it's not going to change, you know, how well a model can see just being another inch up. So what I've done is, with those little towel sci-fi bits, I've stuck it on there just to give it some kind of detail on this piece. Not a lot, uh, but I imagine it as a remote valve. Um, for whatever is in the pipes, I mean, it, it could be Prometheum, it could be um, water, you know, it could be sewage. And I've just stuck a light there and a light there. Not that it's going to really stand out at the moment, but hopefully when I paint it all up grim darkish, you know, really dirty looking, and then you've got that nice source of light there, it's going to make it pop. So, without further ado, now I have messed around with this so much I am now actually going to use the rattle can on it see this is the worst bit for me having all the bits in front of you you know all your creative juices going and I can't make a decision I'm a terrible person for making decisions but I'm reasonably happy with this so I'll get some nice primer on this and then we'll start painting it up so this is the kind of thing you could get after you seal it with a rattle can so you can always paint it the good old standard silver and wash it up. Lots of black washes and then rusty streaks everywhere. And that's fine. That works okay. 
Uh, I want it a little bit eye-catching, but not stupid like fluorescent yellow pipes or anything like that. So what I'm going for is a bit of a grey pipe. So I've got some airbrush paint here. And I'm trying to make it so the, the grey is on the, the bigger areas. And you've got a little bit of contrast, a little bit of the dark grey, a little bit of light grey. An airbrush is perfect for that. But you can paint it whatever colour you want. So I'm going to aim for greys on the main pipes. Probably go for the silver on the gantries and maybe the big pipe. Um, and then hopefully when I do my rusted streaks, it will stand out a bit more on the greys. So give your paint pot a good old shake. Even if you're not using an airbrush, it's always nice to shake your paints. And that's the kind of colour I'm going for. So hopefully be a bit more muted with the, the silver. So make sure my airbrush is nice and clean. And apply some of this grey. So swirl it around in your bowl. No lumps or anything. Give it a bit of a test to one side. Looking very smooth. I'll give it a little bit more air. Right. Now I'm using airbrush mainly for speed and plus some awkward angles to get at so I'm going to do each section at a time so hopefully I don't miss anything So because there's so many different angles on this I'm not too worried about overspray getting the other pipes with the airbrush, I'll tidy up later on. So, nice and gentle there. A bit harder there. Like I said, you can paint it whatever colours you want. I had some nice greens, painting some green. Like I said, I personally didn't want it too eye catching, but whatever environment you're aiming for, so you know, sci fi, post apocalyptic, how run down is it? Is basically when you ask yourself, how long has this been out of commission? Is it still being maintained? If it's games like Drowned Earth, you know, is it going to be covered in algae? Or are plants going to be growing all over it? So I'm mainly hitting the centre of each pipe. Like so. That's the kind of effect that I'm aiming for. With the airbrush, it's a pretty cool effect. And easily done. Okay, I'll carry on blasting my pipes. Okay, so I finished spraying the main pipes and I've put my first coat of silver on these pipes. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is the gantry. So with the gantry I'm going to use whatever silver you would like. So I'm using this from Games Workshop and I am going to dry brush the gantry. So I'm going to scrape off as much paint as I can I'm going to gently start bringing up the gantry. So I should take up all the detail. And later on I'm going to weather this anyway and put some washes down. But I'm doing this to pick up all the mesh work. And it's important to do this pretty much last of your base colours because of obviously the overspray and if you accidentally get it when you're doing the other pipes as well. So you're just picking up all the, the basic detail. So just like that. So now the mesh should be a bit more visible compared to the other mesh. 
Okay, so I'm going to apply the same practice on that. So just a little bit of paint, wipe off the excess. And this is not an ultra dry brush. Sometimes, uh, like on miniatures, if you want to pick up massive amounts of detail, you know, you can dry brush. Um, but this this is just um, a semi dry brush, if that makes sense. So you you've got enough paint on there to scrape off on the mesh. Uh, obviously, it's not going to be too goopy because it's then going to go through the mesh, start blocking up some of those holes. But it's not going to be too dry, so you're wasting your time. So make sure when you do dry brush this, because it could be quite abrasive for your brush. Cause it's like a Bit of a cheese grater to use a very old brush so I'm using a very old cheap brush obviously for dry brushing something like this fluffier the better so you know a good old knackered makeup brush you know don't use your partner's best makeup brush because I don't think they're gonna be massively happy with you just keep applying it like that so bringing up all the detail and while that's done I'll put a second coat on this and we begin on the washes and all the rusty streaks and grimy marks. Okay so as you can see I've added a little bit of detail by painting up a toolbox the one I showed previously and stuck on the gantry there so it looks like someone's been working on the valve or whatever that's supposed to be opening up inside the pipe to let the sewage or fuel or whatever it is drain out there. So it's just a little detail, it just breaks up a little bit. I can still fit a model there and there. So as long as it's not too cluttered, I'm happy with that. Um, so next, come to the silver pipes. I like to put a little bit of a black wash on it. So you could always use a little bit of this, or you can use a little bit of like a poster paint, and water it down. But I will crack this open. And we use quite a large brush. thin it out just a little bit so really wash it on doesn't have to be too neat just to get some lovely bit of grime on there make it look a bit more aged and once this is dry we'll apply some streaks of rust so just make it look a bit grubby maybe this is what I looked like before it got uh, blasted or blown apart or just left in the badlands. This is what it looked like maybe when it was first manufactured. So we need to grub it up a little bit. So all these silver pipes, I'm gonna put this nun oil wash on. So just making it grimy dirty. And just thin it out a little bit so you get a little bit more streaks than you normally would. Remember this doesn't have to be neat in the slightest. So just slap it on and have some fun. Like so. Okay so now you slap loads of washes on and you can go as crazy as you want, you can put it on the main bits of the pipes as well. But I'm looking for a bit of a contrast, so like a, a almost chalky kind of texture, and then like the wet looking pipe texture. And in between, I'm going to use a little bit of this, but any watered down, rusty looking brown will do. I pick a slightly smaller brush, still not massively small and pick out some areas like this and you just want to do some rusted marks just like that and a couple of little runs of rust so you do that like so I mean if you really want this thing to be rusted up and really beaten yeah, you can drown this stuff all over the model. So I quite like this contrast paint because you can control it and water it down a little bit, make it look really streaky. 
and just push it in the recesses like so maybe wipe off the excess if you think it's too much just like that just to make it look a bit more realistic so I'll go over in a few places on this I'll run some rust down here just like that so some uh, watery streaky marks so it looks like it's running down I'll do it on the ladder because there's quite a lot of detail on the ladder just like so and like I said whatever you you feel like this particular terrain is like if, if it's well looked after probably not so rusty just a little hint here and there um, if it's left out in the waste since been abandoned for a hundred years then you know it's going to be really really bad but I'm just going to do a few watery marks in certain places and I'll come back when that's dry next what I like to do is get quite a dark brown and I get an old bit of sponge so this is from an old blister pack and just sponge a little bit of the dark brown on a pipe or two in a few places so I'm going to go here and this is going to be the chipping and it can be as strong as you like so you're going to have small little stipply sponge marks or great big chips so I'm just going to do a little bit on the corners here where I think it's probably going to get the most wear a little bit probably down here it's probably going to get chipped pretty badly just adding a bit of texture and if you really wanted to push the model rather than just a plain bit of terrain looks still a bit 2D on the paint get a lighter grey or whatever your main colour of the pipes are and just underneath each chip pick out a bit of detail so I'll get a off-white a minute once you've got your off-white or whatever the lighter colour is of your piping just stipple underneath some of the chips, not all of them, you can even sponge this on as well it just gives it a little bit of depth to each chip no one expects you to do all of them but just adds a little something there did the same over here I mean you can make this terrain as quick as you like you don't have to stipple this stuff on at all but I think it adds a little hint or a bit more realism because the paint will have a thickness I mean of course you could always paint this with chipping medium uh, and then you can always weather it off with a toothbrush or something chip off all the paint there we go just a little bit underneath some of the major chips just to give it some depth okay I'll continue doing that the rest of the model next as a complete optional extra I like a little bit of weathering pigments because I would imagine people aren't wiping their feet when they're going on the gantry so I'll get a little bit of this from the pot I just like to stipple it on a nice dry brush on a stippling brush and just wipe it on the gantry just a little bit because I can't imagine people are wiping their feet before going on here so adding just a little bit of weathering pigments Plus it looks a little bit rusty as well, which is quite nice. So the one I'm using currently at the moment is uh, Vietnam Earth. And this is by MIG Ammo. It's just a little bit there. 
and it just go as heavy as you want. You, you don't have to push it if you don't want to, or you can really, really go hard. Uh, it depends on the environment. If you can imagine your environment being wet, you probably won't get much of this on here, maybe a bit of dry, dry mud. Uh, but if it's like an arid desert, bit of a wasteland, and you're going to get quite a bit, and I'm going to imagine there's going to be quite a bit on the ladder as well. And they're going up and down on the ladder. And whoever these people are, they're not, obviously not wiping their feet or wearing slippers. So I'm just going to make it look a bit grubby. And a little bit dusty. Like so. So it's really coming along together now with a few textures. Okay, for another Oxo Extra, as you can probably tell, the compressor's running. I fitted a couple of lights underneath this, and in the center I have previously sprayed it white. So what I'm going to do is just give you a little bit of blue tinge. And there's another one over here, I'll just about see it. It's nice and light all over. And then once dry, really hit that center. And bring it up. And don't worry about any overspray, because it gives the illusion it is actually a light. So you can see the gantry is lit up slightly there. And the same there. What I'll do is shine a little bit of the light down onto the pipe. So you got a little bit of overspray there, not a problem. Depends how bright you fancy this light. I would imagine it's lit up the whole area around here. Just like that. Just a little bit of light, just a little bit of colour on a quite grimy piece. So, blast there, and I imagine a little bit of light will shine on the corner here. Just like that. Possibly over here as well. Okay, nice and gentle. This is going to be quite a distance away. So the closer it is, like that, it's going to be quite bright. Further away, a lot lighter. So there you have it, the final piece. Remember, you can make it as dirty as you want, as beaten as you want. You can have the pipes blasted apart, it could be holes in it. But for me, it's all about the details. So I wrote, watch your head there. And on the other side, little valve there. So you've got the toolbox as well. So I like a lot of grime and then the occasional spot of colour, like the little lights here and here shining down. But it's all about contrast for me. Grubby and then a bit of bright. So you've got a little bit of your high-tech technology there, a bit of valve, valve operation. But make it as beaten as you want, make it as worn as you want, it's totally up to you. It's just a wonderful kit to have these pipes and these drinking straws, but household materials are wonderful. So remember, hoard those bits, and don't be afraid to show us what you've made on our Facebook page. That's House of Chaos Community. All right, thank you very much for watching, guys. Please hit that like button, and please subscribe for more great content. Thank you very much for watching. Catch you next time. Remember, hobby safe.